Welcome to the lower Colorado River region, right along the California-Arizona border. We are just, just west of Highway 95 and north of the town of Blythe, a town that's somewhat near and dear to my heart because I lived there for a couple of years teaching college. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. And let's take a look at what we're going to focus on today. We're going to need to get a different perspective on things uh, because the thing I'd like to show you here is what's behind this fence. So you're looking at it and you're like, I'm not that impressed. And if we look over here to the north, there's another set of fence. Um, but there doesn't seem to be a whole lot, just some dark rocks on the ground. So in order for us to get a good look at the features that we're going to focus on today, we need to head up into the air and take an aerial view. Okay, so now that you've had a nice aerial view of these geoglyphs known as the Blythe and Talios, um, let's take a look at how this process works, how these ancient people actually inscribed these figurines into this desert landscape. And the first thing we like to focus on here is just looking um, off to the west at the mountains. These are the Big Maria Mountains. We can see that there's generally this big apron of sediment, this big feature at the uh, below the mountains here that runs from the foot of the mountains down towards the Colorado River. So we can envision then flash floods and other events that would deposit sediment out into this region on the, on this slope heading down towards the Colorado River. And so we can see on the ground there's a lot of gravel and sediment of different sizes. So these would all be alluvial fan deposits, stream deposits from flash flooding events that get transported down towards the river. But down here in the southwest, um, there is an interesting phenomena that occurs on a lot of the rocks that we look at here. So if we get down here close and look at a lot of these rocks we see on the ground, we see that they're all quite heavily coated in a really dark, a deposit of material known as desert varnish. A lot of times, if you break that open, well, this one's still dark on the inside, but sometimes, we'll see if we get one here or not, eventually, if you break one open, you might see a really different rock on the inside in terms of color. I've even opened up rocks that look just like this and are actually white on the interior. That one's a little bit different colored there. So we can see that the rocks are all heavily coated, for the most part, with this dark varnish. This is again known as desert varnish. So that's one part of the process. The other part of the process, you can see the surface is composed of predominantly gravel-sized particles, right? So we can see it's just mantled mainly with these larger sediment sizes. Of course, when we get flash flooding events in the mountains back here to the west, you would expect those flash flood events to carry not just gravel, but sand and mud, smaller particles. So where are those particles in this environment? Well, this surface here that we see that's just mantled and covered with varnished gravel is what's known as desert pavement. And this forms when the wind blows, it actually blows away all the smaller particles. So the sand and the mud sized particles get preferentially removed from the surface transported away and then the surface is armored or mantled if you will with these larger particles that can't be transported by the wind well what those are doing is protecting the invite the the softer finer sediment below so if we come back down here and actually dig a little bit below that desert pavement we can see that it's pretty easy to get down to a material that's much lighter in color still has some of the gravel in it but we can see there's a lot more of the fine sediment in here the silts the mud the sand does exist there as well okay so this is how these geoglyphs have been inscribed and um, made here on the desert landscape is these people, many, many hundreds or thousands of years ago, 
either removed or somehow broke through the desert varnish that forms the dark material here and actually expose the lighter colored material below the desert pavement to the elements, thus creating the contrast where these big figurines really kind of show up, especially from the air. So really neat little uh, combination here of both looking at the geology of the area in combination with the, I guess, the anthropology and the ancient peoples who inhabited this region. Um, but it all starts with the desert pavement and with the desert varnish that forms on these slopes. Down in the active gullies, like we might, you might see in the distance over here with these um, bushes, that's all lighter colored material. It's just up on these stable surfaces where the flash floods occurred probably many thousands or hundreds of thousands of years ago, a long time ago. These surfaces are still stable. The active gullies still receive uh, rainfall and flash flooding events. So those rocks get tumbled over end on end, but these surfaces up here uh, remain really stable geologically for long periods of time. These rocks have been in position, really not moved for who knows how long, and they're protecting these lighter colored sediments just below. Really cool process here, and something you definitely see in the Mojave Desert and in the lower Colorado Desert. So hopefully that was kind of helpful. A cool look at some geoglyphs here in this area. A neat look at the desert pavement and some of the processes where these geoglyphs were formed. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Uh, thanks for like, sharing, subscribing, and supporting the channel. Appreciate it. Thanks.